All right, guys. It is 11.30 p.m. It is a Thursday night, July 20th, 2023. We are up here at Seahorse Tiny House up in the Piney Woods, all lit up like a Christmas tree, waiting for the big blow to come blowing in. Hopefully one of these pine trees won't come blowing in on top of me tonight. So this is the severe thunderstorm coming in from the west, I guess. Uh, this was the storm that Sister Sandy was in a couple of hours ago. And I uh, thought this would be a fine place to ride out the storm up at the top of the hill. Okay. I love it. They're saying... 60 mile an hour winds coming up here in the next few minutes. Probably doing them. I'm guessing this wind is I'm kind of tucked around the corner. I don't know. I'm taking a wild guess. 20 miles an hour. It's the first raindrops begin to fall. Alright. I do love thunderstorms all right well, I'm probably gonna have to take cover inside here shortly That's, uh, sitting here thinking about all of this wild weather that uh, we have been uh, we have been missing here in the Finger Lakes in the summer of 2023. Well, not counting some wildfire smoke. So, uh, I guess I just heard in a comment that <coughs> apparently it is almost 3 degrees. I assume that is Fahrenheit. Almost 3 degrees above normal for if <coughs> Ithaca, New York for the first three weeks of July and uh, all I can say is if uh, this is three degrees above normal uh, this year that I definitely made the right decision moving to the Finger Lakes good lord uh, you know, this will probably be the latest the corn and tomato harvest has come in. You know, I've been here three, this is my fourth summer, and this is by far the coolest and rainiest summer. But other than the smoke, not complaining, I look at the rest of this damn planet. And uh, then, of course, where I am, even though I'm only, uh, I'm about 18 miles from downtown Ithaca, it's like I am in the coldest spot. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really in Candor either. Uh, Candor's colder than Ithaca. Then I live up here in uh, Shandaken Hollow. That's what uh, this place used to be called, Shandaken Hollow. And I, I can leave Ithaca, and 20 minutes later. And this happens consistently. This is not rare. It'll be like 8 degrees cooler here at Bugs in a Jar Farm than in Ithaca. I am right now, once again, I am in my flannel pajamas and my Fauci t-shirt wishing I had my Uggs on as the big blow blows in. So... Anyway, seeing what Mother Nature is getting ready to deliver here in the Bugs in a Jar Farm. So, kind of reminds me sitting here waiting for a 
severe thunderstorm to come kick my ass. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think my I don't think my sister li listens to my videos anyway. So you know my dear sweet sister, she's been here for two days and nights, and. So we got into this discussion. She's taking her 15-year-old granddaughter. What would that be? My my great-niece, my 15-year-old great-niece, taking her on some sort of exotic uh, tropical rainforest uh, trip here soon. And uh, so they were trying to decide... <coughs> which tropical rainforest to, to go to. They never really consulted me, so they started out with the Peruvian Amazon, where yours truly, you know, has spent about four or five months back in 2009. They were all set to go to the Peruvian Amazon, but then my sister started freaking out that my 15-year-old great and that her 15 year old granddaughter could have a medical emergency that there's all of these possibilities for medical emergencies in the Peruvian Amazon and to be fair I guess the girl does have some sort of I don't know what they are some sort of pre-existing conditions that makes you know makes it a, a, a little bit, uh, you know, a, a little bit uh, m more reasonable, I guess, to be nervous about uh, going down. So, so first she was freaking out that on her watch that her 15-year-old granddaughter would have some sort of medical emergency and then she would have to get like like medevaced out of the Peruvian Amazon into some uh, I, hospital. I am assuming in Iquitos. I, I'm guessing, and she was all freaked out about. The, uh, you know, the level of hospital care in Iquitos, Peru. And then they started factoring in all of these, you know, vaccinations uh, that they were supposed to get, the yellow fever and all of the usual. And then she started thinking about, you know, going down there and getting malaria and all of this shit. Now, of course, I think nine people have gotten malaria in Texas in the past couple of weeks. Also hearing about malaria in Florida are reappearing now. So anyway, with all of that fear, uh, obviously the trip to Peru is canceled. So she said that, <coughs> that she decided to tone it down and they decided to go to Costa Rica instead, you know, where I, uh, my sister has come down a couple of times to visit me down there in the jungle and beach in Costa Rica when I was living down there uh, pretty much 30 years ago. And uh, so, you know, she's talking about this eco lodge with the zip line and, and all of that stuff. And I, I guess we were talking about what beach they were going to. So my 15-year-old niece has never been to a beach in Costa Rica where probably, I, I don't know, millions of tourists from all around the world go to the beaches. But my sister said they are not going to be able to go to a beach in Costa Rica because she heard that there was dengue fever, that there was dengue fever that on the, uh, on the beach in Costa Rica 
so she cannot go to the beach in one of the biggest beach paradises on the planet, as they say, where probably millions of people go there because she's afraid that she or her granddaughter will uh, contract dengue fever. But unbelievably, unbelievably, uh, she has decided to go to a rainforest ecolodge and I was trying to figure out where in Costa Rica she was going and she said they were going to the an eco lodge on the side of a volcano. <laughs> there you go. Peru is over with. That ain't happening. Uh, off to Costa Rica, can't go to a beach because she heard somebody got dengue fever on a beach in Costa Rica. So they're going to go to the safe haven of an eco lodge on the side of a volcano. And I made no... <laughs> comment all I told her I said you know I said I think I remember being at that eco lodge and the volcano was actually blowing lava into the air when I was there and molten rocks about the size of Volkswagens were flying through the air that night I was there just to see if that could get a rise off of her <laughs> uh, then, then I She's making a, uh, she was making some appointment. I wasn't paying any attention uh, what the appointment was for. And she told the person who was trying to, you know, set a, a day and time. And my sister said, I'm getting my COVID update. I am getting my COVID update that morning. I hope it doesn't make me sick. My sister, you know, of course, is fully, fully uh, vaccinated. She's a good little girl. Gets all of her COVID updates. Crosses her finger that the COVID updates don't make her sick. While she won't go to a beach in Costa Rica because she doesn't want to get dengue fever and doesn't want to get all of those all of those vaccinations she would have to get to go to the Peruvian Amazon. It goes without saying that I that I never got any of those goddamn. Ne never well oh shit I did end up getting the yellow fever vaccination but that's part of another story for another day I've told that story before so I did end up under great duress getting a yellow fever vaccination when I was in Peru that's in the summer of 2009 uh, although I didn't I, I, I didn't have a uh, it, that's when I thought I was going to Bolivia, and uh, so I submitted to the jab and uh, ended up not going to Bolivia. Uh, but I have, let's see, <clears throat> three years in Costa Rica, two years in Peru, over a year in Ecuador, Never got any of those vaccines other than that one, you know, that, that I kind of got by mistake. Never taking a malaria pill in my entire life. Never taken a malaria pill since the day I was born uh, with, with all of my trips through the rainforest, li living in uh, malaria land. Uh, and I was talking to my sister about ticks, and 
I, I am guessing that I have pulled 30 of these uh, tiny little ticks. I call them seed ticks. She calls them deer ticks. They're these little things about the, a fourth of the size of a flea, about the size of a grain of pepper. And according to my sister, these are the dangerous ticks. So I have pulled more of these uh, little seed ticks or deer ticks, whatever you call them, off of me in the last two months. It's about every other day I, I pull one off. I, I pulled one off of me to, today at the Verizon cell phone store. I, uh, I, I was digging seed ticks out of me. You, you can't grab them. They're so tiny. All you can do is take your fingernail and dig into the welt. You just dig in with your, with your fingernail and just kind of dig these little fuckers out. And as I say, I'm up to about 30 of these things. So, uh, of course, my sister is convinced I do have some sort of deadly tick-borne disease. And then I pulled six of them, you know, the big ticks off of me at, uh, at that bluegrass festival next. So I'm up to, let's call it 36 ticks that I have pulled off of me in the summer of 2023 and uh, the cool summer of 2023. And uh, we will see. She was asking me how my health insurance was. Obviously, I do not have one penny of health insurance coverage, which she says uh, I will be needing here in a few weeks when this one of these many tick-borne diseases comes to kill me. But uh, I'm getting a little disappointed in our big in our big uh, killer rainstorm. Sandy just emailed me about an hour ago, and she said, you know, it really wasn't that big of a deal. All of this fucking hype. They always give you about severe thunderstorm warnings and take cover and all of that shit. And, uh... Oh, well. I guess this was the big thunderstorm of... July 20th, unless it's on its way, it is coming on to midnight, and uh, I'm going to call it a night and listen to this rain tapping on the tin roof while I still can. Bye, guys.